today we're continuing the series on the nine stages of ego development. This will be stage five, the strategist stage. Before we continue, I'll just say a couple of things about ego development theory. First, it's actually derived from empirical evidence, so it's not just a theory. It's based on the analysis of thousands of sentence completion tests, which showed this pattern of ego development. And back in the 1960s, Jane Levinger first saw this pattern in the stories that women told about their lives when she was analyzing thousands of these sentence completion tests. Then Suzanne Kuckreuter took over her work decades later, and she began adding additional stages. So today we have nine stages of ego development. If we haven't met before, my name is Johanna, and I create content to help you move away from the fears and limiting beliefs of the mind so you can connect to your heart, or what I like to call your true self, and live a freer, more fulfilling life. This ego theory is the only one that says it's the ego's task to construct meaning in the form of a story. And it's not just any story, it's a story that makes us feel safe and more certain about the world around us. All the stage descriptions in the nine stages of ego development theory are idolizations that no one person fits entirely. So don't be surprised if you're not able to easily identify and place yourself into one of these stages. Also, it's going to be more difficult for those of you in later stages like the one I'm describing here. And that's because in later stages, there's more room for unique self-expression. In the last session on ego development, I described the individualist stage 4-5. This is the first stage where a person's worldview isn't mostly based on their cultural influences. They move from doing in the achiever stage four to being in stage four or five. The individualist stage is the first stage in what Carl Jung called the second half of life. This is the half where we aren't so focused on becoming someone important in the world. At the next ego level in the second half of life, we find stage number five. This is the one I'm describing. It's referred to as self-actualized or the strategist stage. Less than 5% of people fit into this category according to the evidence that's been analyzed. It's the first ego stage that recognizes the need and value of different developmental stages for everyone. And like the previous individualist stage, they also have a fourth person perspective, only it's expanded into one that's truly world centric. They don't just have values and goals which are world centric, but they fully embody the principles of this viewpoint. So they don't just talk the talk, they walk the walk, so to speak. At this level, all the confusion and conflict they experienced at the previous level gets resolved. And this is because the individual is able to take a systems view of the world. And with a systems view, they can understand how they affect the world and how they are affected by their environment. And this is due to their capacity for self-reflection and a self-observation practice where they develop a non-judgmental awareness of their thoughts, feelings, their instincts, and their sensations. If you haven't seen it yet, I have a link to a self-observation practice for you to try. Lovinger called the strategist stage the autonomous stage because individuals at this stage can now make up their own story of meaning, totally independent of conventional ideas. Reality can't be changed, but it can be interpreted in different ways. And strategists find the freedom to do this to serve their own preferences and make life choices that support who they want to be. When they begin looking at the bigger picture and taking a fourth person perspective, they'll ask, why is one's life important? 
Personally, I think of those of us who have had near-death experiences or spiritual awakenings as having seriously thought about this question. Why is life important? What's the real purpose of us being here? As strategists, individuals examine their entire lifetime and future generations instead of just looking at five to 10 years ahead. At this ego stage, they can really appreciate their own and others' developmental journeys. It's the first time when someone can look at their whole life's aims for creating meaning and realize that what they've been going through developmentally must also be true for everyone else. And this understanding that we're all at different levels of development brings tolerance and understanding for others in earlier stages. The strategist knows a lot more about themselves and others, so it's easy for them to think of themselves as elitist in this way because they know more about others than others are capable of being aware of themselves. It's like when you listen to a younger generation's attitudes and you find some humor in it because you can remember just how real and important things were for you at that time in your life, although their concerns seem trivial to you now. You can relate to their viewpoint, but you still prefer your own. You wouldn't want to go back. Well, this is what it's like for the strategist. Only they have the capability to understand nearly everyone they meet, not just younger generations, but every individual who's in an earlier ego development stage. So you can see why it's easy for them to have this internal sense of pride. At level five, any empathy for others will be genuine aspects of their true selves. And this is because they've seen themselves as they are with acceptance and empathy from their true self. They have this developing connection with their true self. And strategists value this authenticity. So they believe that higher ego development really is better and it should be furthered at all cost. The ability to reach a higher ego stage leads to a more objective and less distorted view of one's self-identity. Now let's take a look at some more specific aspects of stage five. Strategists become more aware of their inner life. They will use dreams and imagination much more openly than they did at earlier stages. They'll be more creative at this stage as well. They often see and express non-hostile existential humor. They're more aware and accepting of the flaws of being human. So they'll be more comfortable making mistakes and learning from them. They can more readily accept others because they've accepted and integrated their own shadow side through self-observation. They will try to make sense of any contradictions they see in their own habits and tendencies and will try to integrate these into a consistent whole self, what they see as different selves at different times in different circumstances. Privacy and time for self-reflection becomes more important as personal growth and self-fulfillment are leading motivations at this stage. The self is constantly growing and being reassessed. They seek purpose for themselves and watching their own progression is a main source of contentment. They believe that each person's life work embodies trying to become the most one can be. And to this end, helping others grow and find purpose is one of the strongest motivators for strategists. So you'll find many executives, leaders, and coaches will be at this stage. When they experience inconsistencies and paradoxes, 
they will readily accept them as part of life rather than get frustrated by them. They perceive themselves as a sort of regulator of a self system. So they take more responsibility for how they feel and how they behave than they would have before. They can't change the reality of a situation, but they can reframe it to their advantage and their own personal preference. So they may even reinterpret a situation so that their decisions support an overall principle or a strategy that they value. Strategists treat people at their level rather than assume everyone should be just like they are. Their ability to understand others is a great source of self-esteem. They can enjoy relationships, especially as they offer another look into the shadow side that's not possible for them to get without relationship. They know that Good feedback makes one aware of what one is defending or blind to. One needs the compassionate presence of others in order to become the most one can be. Only through an intimate exchange with someone else can one gain a deeper self-knowledge and wisdom. So they have a profound appreciation of other people as mirrors of themselves. And they also desire autonomy because they need some time for self-reflection on what they've observed. They respect others' needs for autonomy as well. And they have a deep sense of appreciation for others, regardless of their level of ego. They understand that there are different needs tied to each level of development. At this ego stage, high levels of empathy are felt and individuals can really get into the shoes of others more so than in earlier stages. They have the capacity to view situations from multiple frames of reference and they can see the points of conflict as well as any points of agreement. And this allows them to create win-win solutions. They know themselves exceptionally well. And all of these qualities combined gives them the opportunity to be truly inspirational leaders. Though they are also susceptible to temptation by the dark side of power. When they defend what they believe to be a worthy cause, they often disregard any negative consequences for themselves. They can be overly forceful with their moral convictions when they're fueled by principled anger. And they seek justice in the world. They stand up against society to uphold their principles or personal convictions. The greatest fear of strategists is to feel that they've failed to fulfill their potential or to neglect the universal principles. Justice, tolerance, a respect for all people. These are the principles that they value so deeply. Any depression they might experience is often based on three issues. The first is a loss of courage to defend their personal convictions. The second is a loss of their own capacity to act independently and make their own free choices. And finally, they may experience guilt for not having fulfilled their own unique purpose. When their need to have others become the most that they can be encounters any opposition, the strategists may feel impatient with others' slow development, and they may become irritated with someone's unwillingness to grow in spite of their having the capability to do so, as well as all of the efforts that were put forth by the strategists to help them. And this is the fundamental flaw of the strategist stage. Typically, Strategists will use mature defenses. When they use less mature ones, they are forgiving and understanding towards themselves. 
they'll tell themselves, right now, I'm giving in and acting like this, but I will act more maturely again later. They can use any number of mature defenses, such as suppressing an angry impulse or making an effort to set aside something distressing until there's an opportunity to deal with it. They can use humor to diffuse situations or focus on their altruism by thinking, I'm doing this for a greater cause. Whatever the stressful situation, they will make an effort to be mature about it. For the strategist, life is an open-ended journey. And although the strategist has faith that we can all make meaning out of difficulties, they also believe that there is no predetermined path to follow for all human beings. Each has to find and create their own lifestyle, and each is responsible for their own self-fulfillment. Their personal story of how to lead a meaningful life doesn't have to be imposed on others. They're interested in psychological questions and how to come to terms with any inner conflict. And they find having to work to make a living and other constraints of life hindering. They much prefer to enjoy their passions on their own terms. Now, if this sounds like you or someone you know, please leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Don't miss the next session in the nine stages of ego development theory when we discuss the characteristics of stage six, the magician stage. As always, I'll include links for ego development theory in the description below. Take care and I'll see you soon.